we're recording. <laughs> and what a coincidence, Ros. The same kind of. <laughs> so, Ros, it's fantastic. It's um, it's lovely to be having this conversation with you. And as we were sort of chatting just just now, we've actually sort of known each other, you know, um, sort of through various sort of social media for a long time. Um, yeah, but this is the first time we've actually been sort of face to face like this. I know. I'm in your office and you're in my study or vice versa. I don't know. It's fantastic. I feel yes. very honoured and delighted to be in your presence. <clears throat> well, it, it, it's, I'm so glad we're having this conversation because you're an author, among other things, you're an author and you're the author of, and I'm just going to get the title right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at Cancer, How to Heal with Love, Laughter and Mindfulness. Yes, that is correct. You got it right. <laughs> and you're also, uh, again, I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I get this right. <laughs> adjunct lecturer at La Trobe University in Melbourne. And you're starting a new course uh, yes. on laughter, resilience and well-being. That is correct. Yeah, for professionals. So not for undergraduates at this stage, for people already in the workforce. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, um, uh, uh, so uh, I have a funny feeling, Ros, that, bo that both your book and your course kind of, sort of lead into um, a kind of a joy conversation. <laughs> yeah. yes. there's, there's, there's joy and there's sort of like evidence-based research mixed up with the joy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Well, so, so, therefore, thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, Roz, what is joy to you? What does joy mean to you? I should have done my homework and thought about this and thought you would ask me that question. Joy to me is just, it's just that feeling of, of oneness, of delight. It's sort of like a, when I sort of am in a joy state, I'm beaming from the inside out and it doesn't matter whether it's raining outside. It doesn't matter whether, I don't know, there's a mess in the house. It's just, it's just this internal state that just, as I say, resonates out. Um, and, I, and I feel that I can sort of tap into that state quite easily. For me, the fast track way to joy is through smiling. If I just place a smile on my face and I embody that smile, I'm in joy. You know, that's my joy state. How fantastic, how fantastic. Um, um, in a way, you're kind of implicitly sort of answered, you've certainly touched on the second question, which of course um, is how, how important is, is joy to you? Um, uh, because everything you've been saying there is, it suggests that joy is, ha, it's a fundamental thing that you really enjoy in your life. Um, yes, and it's, and it's, not a so, it's not a superficial construct either. For me, I feel like that sense of well-being yeah. when I'm tapping into that energy of joy. So yeah. for me and my well-being, it's something that I want to connect to regularly. And if yeah. I don't, then I notice that, you know, I'm just not, you know, feeling as, as good as I could. Yes, yes. Um, now, can I ask you a third question, Roz? <laughs> okay, is that, is, that the, is that the maximum? Because <laughs> <clears throat> what you've said, though, um, um, I was thinking about the, your book, which I believe, I believe you might have a copy of your book handy somewhere, very close to the screen. Dun, 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 dun. Your wish is my command. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> now, um, one of the things that's quite clear to, in this sort of a conversation is that you know um, you have this natural wellspring of joy that's just sort of, sort of uh, uh, bubbling up. Uh, I'm sure, given that your your own journey, the one that you describe um, in, in your book. Um, uh, I, I'm sure there must be a, uh, I'm sure people would like to hear um, uh, in your own words, the relevance of sort of joy and your, yeah, and your kind of your wellspring of smiling joyfulness, now, its role in your own journey, Rods. 
Yeah, no, that's a, it's a good question. And I think that it is important for people to realise that, you know, I haven't, I haven't sort of got to where I am because everything has gone super well for me, you know, personally, you know, in, 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 you know and, and one of the things that, you know, I have struggled with has been my health. And initially it was chronic fatigue syndrome. And then, you know, more seriously for me, it was bowel cancer, which was about nine years ago. And, and for me, that was, you know, that's, that's a very challenging time that's filled with adversity. And at the time, I remember making a really, a real conscious choice. It's like either I could focus on the wellness, or I could focus on illness. And I was already in the laughter space. And I was already in the health promotion space and the well being space. And I knew in that there basically I had to imbibe the words that I had been easily sort of dishing out, you know, to, to other people, you know, laughter is the best medicine and, you know, decrease your stress. And, and what I found was that this notion of joy or smiling or reframing in a positive way was therapy, essentially. It, 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 didn't, it didn't mitigate what was going on inside me, what didn't mitigate the fact that I needed two operations and it didn't mitigate uh, the, you know, the, the challenges that I, that I went through in what I call, you know, that year of healing. But what it did was it shone the light on wellness. It shone the light on positivity. And I realised that whatever you place your attention on, whatever you focus on, that is what grows. So I could easily just sort of wake up in the morning and feeling, feel very sorry for me myself and that's and if I continue to do that that I would have just easily that's where I would have been turning my attention feeling sorry for myself thinking about all those f words you know the fear the frustration yep. or I could put a smile on my face I could do a smile meditation I could challenge some of the language around cancer that I did wasn't comfortable with but the big c I didn't like that I referred to it as the little c yeah. I had uh, an ileostomy because um, essentially to enable healing, it's like essentially I had to wear the shit on the outside of, you know, my um, abdomen for four months. Yeah. And the operation that when they reconnect the bowel in, in medical terms is bowel reversal. For me, a reversal was inherently negative. I wanted to use positive language. So I referred to it as a bowel reconnection. It just yeah. felt like there was much more empowering. It felt much more, um, yeah, just a positive and future direction. So it, was, it, it wasn't a passive state, Joe. It wasn't like I just sort of just, you know, decided maybe it would happen, maybe it wouldn't. I made a conscious effort every day to do something to yeah. tune up, to amplify the positive. Yeah. And, and, and that might be in the most tiny way you know it might just be just just as I say just a smile meditation and sending that smile around my whole body and allowing it to reside you know where there might have been more pain or or in whatever way it might have been when I was more physically well to to laugh out loud you know with the family with friends so mm. <clears throat> so because uh, one of the things you said very early on in this uh, in this chat was that um, smiling is your gateway, is your own gateway to joy. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, and, and what you've been saying now when talking about your, your healing journey. Um, yes. Uh, is that, uh, again, a smile was sometimes a thing, it was the thing that you did when you needed to, um, you know, to give yourself that, that lift before, <clears throat> before you might, before maybe you had sort of the energy to be more kind of, you know, ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> um, yes. uh, you could do the smile and you could do, you know, you could do smiling meditation. You could take it around your body. Um, uh, uh, and so it, it, if I've heard you right, because for you, a smile is your gateway to joy. Yes. <clears throat> in a way, therefore, when you are smiling and doing your smiling meditation and taking it around your body, you're taking joy around your body. Is that, is that a sort of fair 
Uh, absolutely absolutely and you know we have these things called endorphins you had the the privilege of speaking to William Bloom you know the other yeah. week and he wrote yeah. the endorphin effect which I yeah. just love and you know and that's one of the things about a smile or, or turning towards things that, that bring us joy it releases those endorphins and endorphins are our body's endogenous morphine so yeah. the more we can sort of tap into that supply you know that's our that's one way that we can modulate pain that's one of our you know gateways to well-being and yep. and it's not just endorphins it can be oxytocin you know that feeling of, of intimacy or you know just safety it could be you know dopamine you know you're getting that yep. that rush of like you know that smile and especially if you share it with someone you're getting that wow they're smiling back at me and it's ka-ching 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 um yep. Yep. and serotonin so you know yep. which is those one of the you know ingredients of antidepressants so essentially through this one smile I was tapping into this incredible bar between my 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 ears you know the best bar in town um you know for our emotional cocktail fantastic um, I think people will find this conversation well I, I'm sure they will They're incredibly inspiring because no because um you're talking about your journey your own journey this is what you did <laughs> um, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> so, so you're sharing your experience of um of what a a practical and easy and important um thing <laughs> a, a smile can be but particularly when it relates to you know uh this inner wellspring of joy um, that's right uh, and presumably this is the kind of thing you'll be covering we're going slightly off script here now of peace, okay, let's strap up. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Where are we going? <laughs> well, I think related to your course, because we were chatting a bit about your your new sort of well-being course for professionals. Yes. Presumably, so, yes. Okay. Um, well, presumably, you no, know, your um, your own sort of journey and your own experiences and your and your own joy and smile journey um, uh, is is part of this this new course you're going to be running presumably uh it will form a part of it um it's actually really exciting because there's nothing there's nothing like it at the end of the five sessions five 90 minute sessions participants will be able to become laughter resilience and well-being facilitators in their workplace so and it's basically so i'm going to be introducing well the theory behind humor and non-humor based laughter therapies and, and smiling and the neuroscience of smiling the science of laughter but also giving people lots of different strategies that you know not everybody is going to necessarily think that in their workplace a smiling meditation is going to be the way to go but perhaps maybe joyful journaling might be a way or yeah. actually to just throw in some laughs or to get you know to just awaken that sense you know our sixth sense of humor uh so it's really going to be covering a whole range of different ways that people can turn towards their joy yes. and not just because you think it's a good idea or i think it's a good idea but because there is evidence to suggest that when we actually tap into these things we are you know having you know there's physiological effects there's emotional effects there's social effects there's even spiritual effects that we have you know that that we can't get these sorts of things you know from a, from a drugstore or from a chemist from a pharmacist whatever language people want to use <laughs> but yeah. you know these are these are inner resources and it's just a matter of i suppose firstly knowing that they're there and it's really tuning them up because yeah. I think that you know alongside you know growing older is is you know this notion of seriosity you know we think that yeah. you know seriosity is more important than joy yeah. and you know that's what that's what keeps the news broadcasts alive and well but you know at a fundamental human level we are social beings we yeah. smile and laugh before we talk it's often the last thing that goes before we pass on to the next world so we're actually activating what has been there all along and what might just be a little bit you know just silenced over the years but we're just it's like we're taking it you know a, a tuning fork and just just tuning it up and experimenting with how that feels within ourselves to then take it to others yes 
fantastic. Rose, <clears throat> I, I knew this would be a fantastic conversation and it's, and it's been just fantastic. <laughs> it's the hat magic. It's the hat. It's the hat magic. What a coincidence. Can I, tell you, can I just tell you, I was really drawn to wearing a hat because I know you're a hat man, but this cap, my dad, who is um, no longer sadly, he was a really conservative medical practitioner, but he believed in the value of laughter. And he would always try and share a joke with, you know, one of his patients or, you know, just try and, you know, build people's moods up. And he had this thing for hats. And every time he went on a holiday, he would like buy these zany hats. So I'm thinking, Yes. Where does this actually fit into this straight laced, you know, conservative guy? And I've got all sorts of his hats. I've got music hats. I've got Sherlock Holmes. I've got probably this is a gay Mardi Gras hat. He probably didn't know it was. <laughs> it's, so that was, and this is the thing about joy. It's also, it's connecting to our sense of play and yep. just allowing ourselves to have a bit of fun yep. and you know these are the things that we did naturally when we were younger and just sometimes we just need to have that physical reminder that it's okay we can do that as well when we're when we're older and it's really important for our well-being fantastic Roz it's been an absolutely fantastic conversation um thank you very much uh, and of course we you know we are probably literally so half the way around the world from each other. You know, you're in Australia and I'm, I'm in the UK. I, um, and, and in Zoom land, here we are in, in, the, in, in the now, the here and now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's been fantastic, Ros. Thank you very, very much for, um, you know, for uh, sharing your time and your joy. <laughs> oh, any I just I just so appreciate what you do and any any opportunity to yeah, to just sort of talk joy. I mean, yeah. what, what? <laughs> there's nothing better. <laughs> I know, I know. <clears throat> Ros, so thank you. And thank you very much indeed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.